time, I'd like to go ahead and call on group two to report back. Uh, again, I'm going to ask that you, uh, you try to be brief so that we have time for each of our five groups to report today. So, group two. Thank you. Thank you. Respected Chairman, worthy participants, good morning to all of you. Uh, I am uh, presenting the group two, where uh, the members were myself, Narendra Gautia, one Dr. Vikram Singh, he was absent, who was then uh, Dr. A.K. Singh, Dr. Manjit Mishra, Dr. Enrico Bonati, Dr. Sanjay Chaudhary, Dr. Pedanti Gurumurti, Dr. Lakshmi Murti, and if one was absent, so included one Dr. T.P. Sethu Marvan. So these were the eight active participants as one was absent from the group. So we were eight uh, who discussed about these uh, questions which has been handed over to us. Uh, my producer, Dr. Gunjal, he was an expert of distance education and he nicely presented and answered the question which uh, we also discussed and almost gone in the same direction during our discussion. We Particularly, I don't know other about our other members. The maximum of us were the classroom teachers, not have much experience of distance education. And whenever we talk, sometimes we talk about distance education in our university, it is opposed to all around the gatherings. So it's a nice experience for us that now distance education is coming up fast and it is now the need of the society. In just a in brief, I want to tell one thing. In Gujarat, though there is no distance education, but government of Gujarat have a mass movement which is called Krishi Mahotsav, by which the scientists are reaching to the farmers and the society or the people, uh, the uh, you can say the stakeholders, uh, even industrialists or uh, those who are working in agricultural uh, industries. A mass moment of one month moment where all scientists are going each and every village. So there are 1800 villages, uh, 18,000 villages across the uh, state where in every village the farm, uh, the, the scientists reach in one month long program and they meet the farmers in each village and give the details of or about the technology, not only the details, but all digital media and everything is used to disseminate the programs to the farmers. And it is going on since last, uh, uh, I think, five, six years. And it has got a big success by which, the, uh, the, uh, though the overall uh, rate of development, of uh, agricultural development in the country is around 3%, or even lower than that. Uh, the Gujarat is in two digits, always the yearly growth is about more than 10% growth in Gujarat of agriculture. So that program has got a big success, though it is not a, I would say, in, in this mode, but mode is same, reach to the mass, masses. And the way is chosen is to one-to-one -one, uh, program. Now this is another way of reaching to the people through the uh, MOOCs, we can say. So, uh, I think the consortium is going in the right direction. This is the need of the hour. We, we our, all the members, all the respected members, they agreed that this is the thing which is required today and we, sh we shall be positive in this direction. As far as the, uh, the questions are concerned, 
we have discussed let us let me go one by one what should be the financial guidelines and policies and what are the constraints of the institutions so as far as the uh, financial uh, guidelines i think the what uh, we thought of the same way earlier the group one has also said the same way uh, we should uh, think over about the fee the fee should be not uh, there is second question was uh, should money flow back to the consortium if money is being made if so what percentage so uh, before that some uh, finance problems also discussed so just i read finance committee may work out the financial guidelines there is one finance committee it is already mentioned here they can work out the what should be the financial guidelines we should leave this to them and at least one official from the country where the consortium registered should be the member of the committee that was the opinion of the uh, all should not be from the different places but one officer should be from the place where the uh, consortium is registered that will uh, help in getting the uh, touch of the local authority now about the money flow the money should go back to the consortium and savings can be invested in corporate or endorsement funding that that was the opinion of the uh, members that uh, the money remains with consortium only and they should keep in some savings or, or uh, uh, corporate funds for the future development of the, the programs instead of uh, giving percentage to the individual institutions so the that was the about the money flow then uh, the third was the how were these financial aspects monitored and audited uh the monitoring should be done by finance committee and the audit should be done by third party which is registered party to this job means uh, like uh, in india we have chartered accountants so they are third party who are doing the uh, audit of any organization so such uh, wherever the uh, consortium registered whatsoever the uh, registered authorities are available for doing the audits they should be consulted and their audit should be done through them and uh, uh, as far as monitoring is concerned the finance committee is already there that is mentioned that that can do the monitoring work another uh, good uh, suggestion was there that another open chap open the chapters in different continents and pay certain percentage of the earnings to them for their development of developmental activities as decided by the executive board means a sum of the fund may be given to the suppose uh, across the world Uh, we we cannot manage from one place. Then we should have chapters in different continents. So there may be three or four chapters as we have the different uh, organizations from different continents. So some money can be flowed to those chapters for their development. Yeah. 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 The treasurer should be member secretary. and chairperson should be nominated by the board among the board members so there the inside this uh, the treasurer is made the chairperson of the monitoring financial monitoring committee there was a committee here financial monitor finance committee where it is shown that the treasurer will be the chairperson uh, the people thought that the same person who is monitoring same person is auditing he will himself who is doing work is himself is then chair person that that will not be a good thing he he can be a member secretary other board members may be decided by the executive board but at least the chair person of the committee should be a uh, any other person from the executive board that is that will be divided uh, decided by the executive or nominated by the executive board so that was the opinion now what are your institutional constraints to provide open content uh, one more thing uh, one of our friend he told uh, there are uh, uh, members from africa uh, america asia 
Europe like that. But why we left Australia? So he told you include one from Australia and uh, instead of uh, uh, five at large members, it should be four at large members. If you want to remain with nine people, nine people in the executive committee, so one should be from the Australian continent, including New Zealand. So uh, and four can be at large members. That was one suggestion. Now the fourth one. What are your institutional constraints to provide open content? So we, we thought of that it is better to follow some standard licensing policy, what we call generally CCL, Common Creative License for our country. So that, uh, that will help us to uh, uh, give the control of the whatsoever the content we develop in this consortium. And the honor will be the uh, institute which develop the con content. The ownership remain with him. It will be uploaded or run by, or the program is run by the consortium, but the ownership will remain with the individual institute or member who has developed the content. Now, the consortium should create and manage the infrastructure including human resources. That work remains with the consortium. That uh, he should create and manage. Both the what, what means for creation of the infrastructure as far as for the management including the human resources. That uh, work should be done by the consortium. Now the sixth question was the, what constraints and impediments exist in your organization? There, it was the uh, very typical questions. Everybody was uh, thinking that what to answer to this and then ultimately we thought it depends upon individual institution. That what the, every institution its own rules and regulations and limitations. We cannot uh, give certain answer directly to this. So it should be left to the individual institutions that how they can uh, compensate themselves inside the consortium. Seventh is, what do you think is the possible way your institution would use the content? The possible way of uh, useness of contents is academics, trainings, workshops, seminars, capacity building, HRD means human resource development, development of systems, including software and wide dissemination. These were the areas where uh, or where the contents can be used or the ways in which the contents can be utilized. Now, would there be benefit? Obviously, if the answer should be yes only if there is a benefit or not, then and then only we are here and we are thinking to become the partner in the consortium. So everybody was uh, of the same opinion, yes, everybody will be beneficial, uh, members also, and the uh, mass also, because they will also get uh, education at large level. Um, are there national curriculums and institutions that would prevent? The last question was, so, Naturally, as I told earlier also, the national curriculum problems will be there. Every institute is governed by some bodies or some regulations, some organizations. But they have to find out their solution their own. They, they, they will discuss in their own uh, legislative bodies or the uh, councils. And they will find out the solutions that how they can come up to those, their problems and can become a part of the consortium. So again, this question goes to the individual members only, and uh, others cannot answer for such questions. So these were the nine uh, questions which we addressed. Apart from this, uh, we have one or two uh, discussions that were on the portability of softwares, models, systems, which were developed should be standardized by the consortium. Uh, this, this was a very nice suggestion. 
that uh, whatsoever the software models or systems which will be developed or by the individual members and that should be uh, standardized by the consortium the portability of those uh, developed systems and there should be a centralized registry and deposit depository to avoid duplication means the consortium should do this work wherever the, there is uh, infrastructure is there that it should, uh, it should be a centralized registry and depository is also there to avoid so one work which is done by one individual partner or one institute should, work, should not be duplicated by other and duplication is not only the wastage of time but it will the, sometimes the country will conflict also so it is better to, if somebody wants to do, suppose, already the content is there, he can improve over there. But if he cannot make his own separate or something like that, then the contradictories are there in the content. So better to have a depository system and registry system with the consortium, so that all the material developed, the content developed, can have at one place, one can get or have the basis of that what development has been done and where uh, he should proceed. So I think uh, we have tried our level best to uh, discuss these things and these are the answers. If any questions, we will take that one. Thank you to all of you. Thank you for your report. I'd like to come on group three to report out to the, to the conference and uh, I'm going to remind you, we've got about 25 minutes left during this session. So I do ask that each reporter be brief in your comments.